how you doing everyone? It's me, Green Zero, and I'm back here again bringing you another VOD today. Uh, this will complete my triple VOD for this week, and we have, uh, who do we have in this game? We have Dizel. I'm not sure how that's actually supposed to, supposed to be pronounced. It's D-Y-S-Z-E-L, Dizel. I've seen him before uh, quite a bit, and we have I'm Tibbis, who I know. Um, these two players should be pretty even, in my opinion, because I have seen replays from a fair bit of these guys, and they're pretty good. It's random v random, even though it says black hand, because dies are uploaded. So let's uh, close that straight away, and we obviously have him down here. I'm just going to call him uh, Diesel. I'm assuming that's what it's going to be. Sorry if it's wrong. He's probably going to correct me in the comments if he sees this. He's got black hand down here. Let's have a look what Tibbis has got. Now, Tibbis, I've only really ever seen him play GDI, and he has drawn a screen faction. I'm not sure what screen fashion he's got here. We're going to have to wait until he builds some infantry. He's got an assimilator out there, and we can see advanced articulator icon there. So that means he's Traveler 59. Traveler 59 versus Black Hand on decision. That's going to be pretty tough. Um, I'm not sure who's going to win again. These guys will be pretty even. And it's dual barracks drop. Four dies there. He's going for dual barracks. Uh, one engineer either side. He obviously doesn't know that he's up against buzzers. He's probably going to be happy to see buzzers because he has cabal squads, and he can absolutely rip those guys to pieces. Buzzers have nothing on cabal squads. And he's going to come around here. That engineer needs to watch out that he doesn't get killed. He's uh, splitting up. Uh, this buzzer squad here obviously trying to get in and behind the spike. This is a really common tactic that we've seen a lot now. They hide behind the spike. And then the cabal squad has to come around the corner. And this is a trap. It's a trap. What are you doing? It's a trap. And he goes around. And is Tibbs is actually not watching here. And it looks like, yeah, that was, that was bad. Uh, the idea behind that is that the scouts have to come up and around the corner. And the buzzers just go bam and zip around and kill them all. But in that case there, Tibbis was not paying attention, and he lost his scouts. So I doubt he would have actually been able to kill the Engineer anyway, because there are two scouts of Cabal there. And those buzzers would have had a hard time. And look at this, we have fast disintegrators on the field, fast disintegrators from Tibbis. So he forewent any kind of uh, early War Factory for, he's got his War Factory up now by the way. And was that a refinery cell? Diesel just sold his refinery because he's going for the bike rush. This is an unusual kind of uh, re refinery cell, he's got no refinery. He's obviously building one now, but that's that's interesting. That is, I've never seen that before. They usually place a second ref and sell the second ref, but now he's got two ref, two harvesters. He's got one cabal squad there, and he doesn't have stealth harvesters. This could be critical. Is he going to micro his harvesters away? He's microing them now. Yes, can he save it? He's got one cabal squad there, but no, he's going to lose. Oh, not quite. Yes, he does lose it. He loses one harvester. He needs to move that one away. No, he drafted another power plant. Got another cabal squad there. And I'm Tibbis, uh, he, I think he had an impact there, he got one harvest and it's probably what he was hoping for. He knows that, uh, he knows that Dizel is actually trying to rush him now. So he's going to come across and he's obviously going to build something like a Seeker Tank or a Gunwalker. Um, he should probably place a portal, he's placing one now, he's only got one buggy here to take out disintegrators and he's probably going to take them out because he's got, uh, he's got fast legs there, he's probably just going to run after those bikes and hunt them down. One Seeker Tank there, he's going to need to take this buggy out right now. And that Seeker Tank is going to nail one bike straight away. I'm Tibbis Michael's Harvester. That Harvester not quite dead yet. I think Dizel could have made a better effort on killing that Harvester. But it looks like now he's going to lose his buggy. No, not quite. Those Disintegrators are really chasing it down. They get it. Nice work there. So I think Tibbis did a lot better job defending that out. He really snuck up in this field over here against Dizel. Dizel's not going to be happy that his uh, counter rush uh, could not uh, have an impact there. I mean, he's forced Tibbis to build a lot of units, but he's lost a lot himself. His economy is down. He's one harvest behind. Iron Tibbis did not lose a harvester. He's a little bit down now. He has not got another ref queued. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a third harvester. Yeah, it is. Yeah, when, when games tend to go like this, they usually build a third harvester before a second ref, just so it keeps their economy uh, just like, streamlined. And now he's going for another ref. It looks like he's got Seeker Tanks here. And Seeker Tanks actually clean up scouts. Uh, re reasonably okay. I mean, these uh, Kamal squads are going to go down now. What's happening up here? It looks like the disintegrated squads actually stepped out a little bit too far and they've been gunned down by these buggies. There's three buggies here from Dizel. Has he got more bikes somewhere? Oh, he's got Kamal squads. They're going to be very, very powerful against uh, Traveler 59 and he has a double ref, tri no, double ref, triple half, quad half now, quad half. I don't think I've ever said that before, but it looks like Tibbs has just matched him. Then he should send one of these harvesters over here because there are two lining up. Is he going to notice that? No, he's not. He's just going to let them sit there. Uh, not too big a deal. Again, these guys should be pretty evenly matched from what I've seen and my opinion. If anyone cares about that, and it looks like Seeker Tanks versus Buggies now. They took the bike out, and these Buggies can't really do too much. Well, actually, maybe they can. They took out one of the Seeker Tanks, and there's three. There. There's actually still a bike there. It's hidden behind the tree. You can see it. There it is now. That's why they're taking that Seeker out pretty quickly. And he lifted his drone shield off, but he's put it straight back down. He's going to have a hard time pumping out disintegrator squads to counter this because there are so many Buggies here. He's going to Seeker Tank his way out of this. 
and now there's no bikes left, he can do a pretty good job of that. He's micro around like crazy, he needs to get that one behind the War Factory, I don't think he's going to get it back there, it's going to go down, but buggies, I mean they can't really touch the harvesters, they're not really going to achieve much, I don't think anymore, they're going to have to leave. So uh, Diesel just keeping the pressure on a lot of those buggies, pretty badly damaged and a lot of Seeker tanks out now. It'll be interesting to see whether Tibbis goes for tech or maybe a third ref or even a second War Factory here. But it looks like, looks like Diesel has got triple ref out, so he's ballooned. How many harvesters has he got? One, two, three, four, five? Have you only got five harvesters there, Diesel? That is not a good ratio. He needs to build uh, at least one more, hopefully two more, to get the good ratio going there. But yeah, he needs two more harvesters, I think. He's got dual war factory, so I think he's just content with going by buggy. And I mean, this isn't a map we see bike buggy on very often because it's a closed map. It's not big, open, and it doesn't stretch. There's garrison bulls, there's lots of choke points and stuff like that. And the Seeker tanks have come out and they're going to scout this very, very far ahead of schedule. And they're going to pull back over here. It looks like they're going to go around and go for some harvest harassment. They're, having, they're being forced to come back to base and Tibbers has nothing to defend. One, two, three, four, five, six, he has seven. He has a good harbor ratio. He's only got one war factory production structure. He's got another structure queued now. What is it? It's, an, it's another war factory. Where's the units gone? It looks like Diesel delayed his attack there. It looks like he's been... Uh, back here destroying these few Seeker tanks and that's going to give Tibbers just a precious amount of time just to get some more Seeker tanks out. So I think that delay was a bit critical there. I'm Tibbers now has got mass, mass buggies at his doorstep and he needs to do something this, about this right now. I mean disintegrated squads are going to get just massacred. He should just start dropping photon cannons but he needs, he sold his portal, he needs a portal to build photon cannons. Photon cannons would be really good in this situation. He'd get a couple up by the time this attack's ended and a lot of damage done there. There's a lot of Seeker tanks now, but again, these buggies, they're not, I mean, they can destroy the Seeker tanks pretty quickly because there's just so many of them, but I've never seen this before. It's all out buggy spam, but can they really touch these harvesters? I'm not sure if they can touch the harvesters. I mean, there is the nerve center, but what is that gonna do for Iron Tithis? He, he could use his temporal wormhole or whatever it's called, temporal stasis chamber. It's a, it's a take out of this, the normal stasis chamber, just slows you down. There's a scorpion tank there, could be transitioned into a scorpion tank. These buggies are going to have to leave. I just think he realized he couldn't actually do any damage to these harvesters with just buggies. I mean, they're so weak against vehicles like that. Seekers do, tank it, do take a fair bit of gun damage there. And it looks like Seeker spam is going to help him get out of this. Obviously not being able to rely on his disintegrators there because it's all out buggy spam. And I mean, Iron Tibbis, not Iron Tibbis, uh, Diesel could get a lot of Cabal squads out right now, go throw some infantry and then he could just pump bikes and cabals, but instead he's going all out buggy spam. I'm not sure how viable these buggies are going to continue to be. It looks like Tibbers has even got the guts to just chase them back to their base and push them away, but I think he's stirred up the hornet's nest here, and they're coming back out, but they're coming out in single file, and it's probably what he wants. He's getting them one at a time. Every buggy that goes down is going to hurt. I mean, they're only 500 bucks, so I guess it's not going to hurt too bad, but it's just going to diminish the squad here, and there's so many buggies. He's got so many of them. Why has he got? He's got a ton of them. I mean, he's up against just nothing but Sieg tanks now. You would hope that perhaps some tripods would be coming out pretty soon. I'm assuming that Tibbis is trying to tech. We'll just have a look shortly. He's pushing, he's keeping, he's doing a really good job. Finally got that out right. He's doing a really good job at repelling these guys here. Now with just Seeker tanks, and there is his tech center, so I'm assuming he's going dual tripods right now. And dual tripods is going to have him in all sorts of trouble because those, those radar buggies are going to have nothing on tripods. Nothing at all, not unless they get some kind of emp coils on them. And even then, if, if they emp the tripods, what are they going to do? They can't really kill them. Only tier two up now by uh, Diesel, he's only just got his tier 2 out, and these Seeker tanks are again pushing out of this base. They don't want to be contained. This is really good from I'm Tibbers. He's not allowing himself to be contained in his base. He's pushing out and attacking. Where's he moved his drone platform? He's actually going down. Yes, he's going down to the, the expansion down the bottom. Very common on this map. Um, if you have the capture of the center area, I mean, uh, I'm Tibbers could go for these, these defensive towers. If, uh, like right now, it'd be a really good time, and it's transitioning into Scorpion tank spam. And there's a lot more Seeker tanks than Scorpion tanks. Well, well, maybe not. The numbers are pretty even, but there's a ton of buggies. It looks like Dazzle's going to flood back into his main base to defend this, but it looks like I'm Tibbers is being very cautious. He's being very good, actually. He's not overcommitting himself. He's pulling these guys out into a position where he can really just thin the numbers out, get them into a single file, and four Mecha P's are rocked up, and they have shard launchers, and look at the buggies go down to those. Oh no, Dazzle is in all sorts of trouble now. He couldn't make a real impact with these buggies and stuff. I'm Tibbers just refused to get dominated by them. And now he's pushing back, and he's getting his revenge, and he's just going all in there, pushing into this base. Oh man, there's so much going on here. And you can see there, being very careful with the Seeker tanks, pushing them forward, pulling them out, those Mecha P's there doing a majority of the damage, and Diesel all of a sudden finds himself in a really precarious situation. Does he have his tech center? He would like his tech center. He does have a tech center. We can assume an obelisk drop. And there's the temporal stasis chamber, or whatever the hell it's called. I don't think it's temporal wormhole. Oh, it might be temporal wormhole. 
I'm not sure exactly on that. And there's the obelisk, but the obelisk is quite far into the base there. And these Mechapes just demolishing everything that's stuck inside the Temple Wormhole, which is actually pretty good compared to the Stasis Chamber because you can still fire into it and kill the units inside, which makes it almost just as good. And I think it's actually a little bit cheaper too. But yeah, Traveler 59 here, he's doing a very good job with these Mechapes. What's happening down here? There's tripods moving down here and they're going into a completely undefended base, but there may be an Obelisk about to finish here. There's an Obelisk finished, but there's Mechapes on this side, there's tripods on this side. He is in big trouble. He has not got stealth harvest. The Seeker tank's blocking that entrance there. There's nothing blocking the middle of the map now, but these uh, Mechapedes are moved around, and look at that, they're going into the base. I think they should just cut down the buggy numbers there. They're going to be destroying them now. He's not going for M coils, which is strange. He's got so many buggies, he could go for them. Those two tripods there, destroying the harvesters, and now he can even start on the tech center. And that was a sell-off of the tier two there. He just sold his operation center for some flame units there. Obviously, he's a little low on cash. He's even got a purifier out. He's got dual purifiers out. He needs to stop these Mechapedes, and he's stopping them now. The lasers on the purifiers, pretty powerful. But they are very expensive units. These Mechapedes should probably retreat now. One of them is just ranked up. They're very, very heavily damaged, and they may want to get out of there right now while they still can. Three are still going. Is that going to get out? They may get out. What's happening over here? Those tripods are being chased off by nothing but infantry units. I think you really could have pushed there, although there's a lot of rocket troopers coming out now. You can't do much against that. And the sick tanks are moved in over here. And Tibbs is completely running Dizel around here. He's got a late game plan, and Dizel does not. And look at the economy set up here by I'm Tibbis. He's got his economy uh, seriously down pat. He seems to be pretty skilled at playing Skrin. I didn't know he was <laughs> this good at it. But yeah, those Mechapedes are just going to be hanging around the war factories, I think, for quite some time while they get some repairs. There we go. Those two are getting repairs. That one there, not quite in range. He's moving it now. Is it going to stop? No, he's, oh no, he's going to stop, but I, don't think, I think he's out of range there. He may want to move that again. He's got triple tripod down here. No Prodigy, quad tripod now. Another tripod, so he's got five tripods moving down there. He may want to think about taking this expansion soon because he's almost exhausted that one. And I don't think he's, he hasn't quite got enough to crack uh, Dizel here who's transitioning into infantry spam. And well, I've seen a couple of games uh, recently where infantry spam has really been uh, holding back Traveler 59. And it, it's not good. I mean, he's got nothing but tripods. He could go for a crush. He's going for his hexapod now. So he's been, didn't do, uh, he's been doing really good without his hexapod so far. but. Really, it's up to Dizel to really counter this now. He's got his economy down here. He's got nothing but infantry. He doesn't have much of, in the way of attacking units. I'm not sure where those purifiers are. Where are the purifiers? There's two up here. I think they're the only two he's built. They've got four scorpion tanks with them. There's a cabal squad back there. But those mechapedes are coming up here and they're going to run straight into these scorpion tanks. I'm not sure if this, how well this is going to go for Iron Tibbis because once those purifiers start shooting, and they're going to start shooting now. Look at that. The laser every time he shoots, and he actually nails one of the mechapedes. He nails the veteran one. And so those purifiers being very effective against those mechapedes now, which have moved away. Is I'm Tibbs going to attack down here? He's actually got a gravity stabilizer. He may be going for Devastators, and I've seen a lot of screen players transitioning to Devastators lately. They're a very, very underused unit, and he's actually expanding, by the way, which is very good because he's almost out of Tiberium. Devastators are an underused unit. They're an artillery unit, and I mean, you can just sit back and launch. They're not they're completely... Uh, non-vulnerable to tanks and enemy artillery because obviously they're an air unit. They're a little bit more vulnerable to things like Firehawks, but he doesn't have to worry about Firehawks. He doesn't really have to worry about much in the way from Blackhand because he doesn't have any like Venoms or any air at all. And he's obviously put the he's put the Lightning Spike there just so he can get a little bit more vision so that his Hexapod can move. And his Hexapod isn't garrisoned. He's got two Devastator warships. He could go for the Travel Engines to increase their speed. He's got to watch out because his Rocket Troopers is getting quite close there. No, no, no. He's going to just pull back there. Devastators aren't very powerful against vehicles though, they're really a structure anti-infantry kind of thing, even against infantry. And look at that, I'm Tibbs managed to land his drone platform on a really interesting area. I don't think any other MCV could have landed there or deployed there. Is he going to lose it now? There's two purifiers and they have flame equipped. And oh, Tribod's coming in to try to amp. They amp one of the purifiers and it's gone down. One of the other purifiers has actually gone veteran. Is he going to save this and he's running into the amp? Is he going to get amped? No, it goes down. This is bad because that flame unit there and he's trying to take off his drone platform, but there's bikes there. This is going to be disastrous. He's going to lose his drone platform. Bad. Heroic bike in the process. Ooh, so he's winning down here. I mean, he's got Devastators, he's got two tripods, he's got an ungarrisoned hexapod, and he's completely destroying everything Dizel has. But Dizel's moving, he's already actually there, and he's even running for the Emp Station. The Emp Station, or these husks, or what do you call it, the defensive towers. I think Dizel, not Dizel, I'm Tibbs needs to do something to stop those husks getting captured. He's just lost his drone ship. He's probably rebuilding it right now. I think, yes, it looks like he is rebuilding it. He should take this spike because this is going to go late game for him. Uh, like more than just a late game, super late game for him, I think, because there's no tib here. The only tib here left on the map is pretty much up here, and Dizel is starting to tap into that right now. 
So unless this Hexapod can do some serious damage, and I mean, it's completely on Garrison, but Dizel has nothing to really counter that. He has no Imp Coil up. <coughs> he's no Imp Coil upgrade, which he probably should have got, but he's got these uh, Tripods. He's got two of them. If he heals them up and runs them in, he can Imp the Hexapod, and that will give uh, Dizel, I mean, not, not, not Dizel, ah, screwed up again. What is going on today? Growth Accelerator over there. It'll give Iron Tibus a lot of problems if there, are imp on, if there is Imp on the map and he's deploying, so he obviously wants to get some structures down right away. I'm not sure what he's got in mind. He is building something. He's got four Devastators there, and there's little to no anti-air in the way for Dizzler, except for uh, these really slow-moving rocket squads, which are going to be pretty vulnerable. There's a couple of bikes here. There's the Heroic one. They've got the drone ship. There's actually an Elite one sitting next to it. A Veteran Purifier, so he's actually managed to rank up a fair bit here. And it looks like he's going for lots of bikes. Those Devastator warships aren't going to be enjoying bikes at all. And it looks like Dizzler has captured... What has he captured? He's captured one gun turret. He's got two more engineers. He captured all those husks, by the way. Even his own Purifier Husk, he's going to go for the M Station and he's going to go for the tower, but oh man, one shot from those Devastators and that tower goes down. Are they going to get the Engineer? No, the Engineer's moving too fast. And what's going to happen over here, these Devastators are going to sit over the top of the Hexapod. They could benefit from Traveler Engines, I'm not sure why he didn't get it. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure it's not bugged out. Uh, 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 I'm pretty sure Traveler Engines isn't a bugged out kind of upgrade. Some of the upgrades are a little bit bugged in 1.02, but I'm pretty sure they aren't. Just stop talking about that. It looks like the bikes are coming from behind, but the Hexapod is just destroying them all. And those Devastator warships. One has gone down. Uh, another one is about to go down now. There's still that heroic bike just flying around. There's two Devastators now. One Devastator remaining. So they have caused a fair bit of damage. They may have paid for themselves. The Hexapod is retreating, but he's got a lot of units after him. And he's paying for not having a garrison now. It's not very powerful because there's no garrisons in it at all. That one Devastator turned around and took a shot. And maybe he, can get, he got the heroic bikes. That's pretty important there because that was giving a lot of problems. He's got a veteran hexapod now and he's chasing, he's giving chase to Dizel. He's giving chase to this hexapod, which will probably be able to get away. Uh, I don't think he can actually shoot behind him. He's actually being outranged. No, he is taking a shot there. There we go, killing a lot of those infantry there. I'm not sure. And there's the phase. He was forced to use the phase there and it looks like Dizel is going to immediately turn around and head for home. He doesn't want to uh, pursue that anymore. He's got disintegrators and he loads them into the hexapod. Obviously, he can't afford blink troopers or shock troopers or whatever they're called. And a lot of squads coming out here now by Dizel. Not Dizel, Antibus. Oh, got his name wrong. Oh, it's name wrong today. And it looks like some uh, some buzzer squads. It'd be really cool if buzzers got some kind of upgrade or something like that, but no, they don't. They have no upgrades, even for Travel 59. Uh, imagine if you could teleport buzzers. That would be uh, pretty OP. I mean, I guess the problem is you could teleport buzzers. I'm surprised Iron Tibbs hasn't built a Prodigy yet. He needs to heal his Hexapod up. He's got no Corruptors. He's moving across here. He's got a tiny little bit of Tiberium over here. I guess he might as well go for that. Uh, Dizel has both of these structures here. That one Devastator could finish both of them off. Look how much damage it can do to structures in one shot. That is uh, quite serious. He's going to three-shot that defensive tower, and he needs to watch out. He's going over too close to those Rocket Troopers. Oh, no. Iron Tibbs, a miss order there. He takes a swing at them. And look how many he actually killed. He actually ranked up that Devastator Warship. Very powerful against infantry. I mean, maybe that's the answer to man spam. And what's happening over here? Looks like those uh, disintegrator squads tried to move into the base, but a Shredder Turret blocks them. So I'm Tibbs not being able to capitalize there. That Harvest is moving through the middle of the map. He's going to want to block that because that has got a full load of Tiberium in it. And his Hexapod only has two Corruptors behind it. But yes, that that uh, that uh, Harvester is moving through the center of the map. And it's I mean, Tiberium's crucial right now for I'm Tibbs. And he's going to let a full load go down there, obviously not watching. It's probably going to its nearest uh, refinery, which is across the map. It may actually be able to run some of these infantry over, although I'm pretty sure screen harvesters cannot crush. No, they can't. They just hover over the top. Uh, really disappointed that you can't actually crush them either. I mean, tier 3 vehicles and stuff like that can crush them. There's an Emp off, an Emp on the Hexapod. It may be from this Annihilator Tripod, but both of them are down there. And, oh no, this is getting expensive for Iron Tibbers, he needs, to, he needs to diminish these infantry squads right now, but he's only got disintegrated squads in the hex, but he's just going to walk all the way over these units here, crushy, 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 and look at the money he's getting while he's doing that, and dies on not doing that very well at all, these two purifiers going to have to run, and the hexapod just went elite, oh no, he used his air blast, and he missed, he missed his air blast, Diesel, what, what, everyone's going to see that, <laughs> he's probably feeling pretty bad now, how can you miss with an air blast like that? That is just the game that's gone there, and I'm Tibbs is going to come through. He did not teleport his hexapod at all in this game, I'm pretty sure. I didn't see it being teleported. He phased it once, and he only put disintegrators in it, so that was pretty fair use of the hexapod here. Dizel definitely had his chance to kill it, 
and I'm Tibbs was just uh, too quick for him. Uh, obviously that Amp Blast, I still can't believe he missed his Amp Blast and he's going to come out on top. Dizel has cleaned up all the Tiberium here and that's bad for him. Uh, I'm Tibbs did not capture that spike there which is pretty critical. He could have been on three spikes for quite some time now and that Hexquad is just moving and killing Harvesters. He's going to watch out because that is probably getting pretty close to growing heroic right now. I mean look at the Harvesters it's been killing. It's going to get another one. Oh man, it'll be very, very, very close to going heroic. There we go, it just went heroic then and that's going to be the game, the game for Dizel. He's spamming out a bunch of infantry. He's got these two tripods. If he can somehow get an amp off on that on that hexapod, he may be right. There's two devastators sneaking around the top there. Surprised he didn't get traveler engines, and that hexapod is just ripping his base apart. Dizel not going to be happy with the way that game went, considering he was very very aggressive. But Tibbs didn't want to didn't want to know about it. He was like, "You're going to be aggressive. Well, I'm going to be aggressive as well." And he just kept hitting him back, and Dizel was like, "Well, I'm trying to take control of this game, but Tibbs isn't letting me." And Tibbs came back and look at the drone platform. What are you doing? Oh man, that's the second time he's lost his drone ship. And these tripods are running in. Can they amp the hexapod? They do. Oh no, what's going on? I'm Tibbs had the game in the bag. And I think he may have just screwed it. Because he needs to destroy those tripods. And the, oh, the Devastators are down. Devastators are down by the bikes. Oh no, maybe I called this game a little too early. He's got continuous amp on that hexapod. I mean, Dizel's base is pretty much non-existent. He's got a power plant and a conyard. I'm not sure how much money he's got. He's got two spikes. Again, Tibbs not uh, not taking the spike down the bottom there, and looks like this heroic hexapod is down. Oh man, Tibbs just handed that back. Um, I guess that made up for the miss, miss of the Emp Blast over here. And don't forget, this is probably about halfway charged again, so I'm not sure what I'm Tibbs is going to do. He has no drone platform. He has a devastated warship. I'm not really sure what he's going to do. He's got an army coming at him now with three tripods, a bunch of infantry, and these bikes. If he can diminish the bikes. The attack will be very, very slow, and there's actually a harvester that did manage to survive, and he's replaced a ref, and he's getting Tiberium. So yeah, what is I'm Tibbs going to do? He's not going to give up. He's going to keep fighting. Obviously, he's definitely still got a chance in this game. He just needs to be very, very careful with what he does here. These harvesters are definitely going to go down. Uh, that Devastator needs to hang around that lightning spike and not get shot at. Uh, that lightning spike needs to target the damage bikes. Uh, is he going to get one? He does get one. He gets a few, actually, that Devastator. Man. There's two Devastators there, and they managed to land some hits when those bikes stop moving. They're really getting hit, and I think maybe you should just stop the Devastate. Oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Never mind what I said, he just destroyed all the bikes. And I think there's going to be a pretty big sell-off here by uh, I'm Tibbs. Um, he should sell these buildings. It's, there's no Tiberium left on the map. He can't just give these buildings away. He could have got $2,000 out of that and some money out of that on there, but he's going to let them be destroyed. This is bad because these units seem to get experience off that, and he's going to be losing money. This is critical. I see this way, way, way too often where people just let their base get demolished. And I mean, just sell it off, get money, you know, if you get money, you may want, and there is an Ev Blast, ah, uh, bam, he actually targets the most damaged, uh, damaged Devastator warship there, he probably should have targeted this one over here, because uh, Tibbs did spread them out, but yes, Ev Blast does, they do destroy aircraft, they won't destroy a drone ship though, they'll just power it down in midair, which is kind of lame, you would think they'd be able to destroy that, and I'm pretty sure a supersonic airstrike cannot actually destroy a drone ship either. Because I'm, I'm positive I've used it on one, unless it's bugged out a couple of times, uh, it doesn't look like you can destroy them. And this buzzer swarm coming over here, and actually I think I'm Tibbs is trying to destroy the last or the remainder of the buildings over here. And if he if he succeeds, where's the conyard? Conyard is up there. He needs to destroy the last of this anti-air. And looks like Dizel is really confused. He hasn't got these guys on a destruction move over here. And is there another drone platform out? I can't see a drone platform out. Doesn't look like he's building one. He's building corruptors and seekers. What's he going to do with corruptors and seekers? Still, he could have got tons of money if he sold all this off, but he just hasn't done it. And one devastator has remained, and it's just going to be able to outrun these rocket troopers here. Uh, he needs to be really careful. Come on, micro that one, You've got to keep that one alive because if he can destroy these last structures, it looks like Dizel might just about be all over. He's moved over here now. He's got another structure queued. It's probably a power plant. He needs to stop. Tibbs needs to stop these units over here. They were a little bit delayed. He's only got seeker tanks and uh, corruptors. I'm not sure how he's going to be able to stop those. If he had disintegrator squads now, that would be great. But uh, yeah, those, those seeker tanks are probably going to go down to tripods. I mean, they're very, very heavily damaged. I don't know what he's building over here. He could have got, again, a ton of money if he just sold up his main base. He's probably going to be looking back at this game and not be very happy. And the last Devastator is down, but it has destroyed the refinery. And what has Dizel got? It looks like he's just being powered on spikes. No, maybe he's definitely building uh, out of his barracks. And he's, no, he's, he's getting stalled now, so he's building more infantry. And this is what I was talking about. All those units just got demolished. We didn't even see it. There's one storm motor which needs to take off right now. <laughs> oh, it's down on the deck. There's no anti-air there. He could have probably destroyed them slowly over time, but I'm Tibbs. Oh man, 
he's gone down. I really thought he had that game there. Uh, both sides kind of panicking, I think. I think, I mean, both these guys are pretty pretty good players, I mean, but you can see that there were real lapses uh, right there. Obviously, they were both very panicky towards the end there, and I think both sides could have won easily uh, if they'd made a little bit more smarter decisions there. Tibbs obviously doing a lot more damage with the kill-death ratio, but the look at the money. Oh, man, look how even it was. It was 159,000 to Tibbs and 161,000 to Diesel. So, yeah, in the heat of the moment, it's very easy for me to tell them what they could have done but when you're actually in the game, it's very, very difficult to figure that out. So units up and down all over the place there. Uh, Tibbers almost destroying the last of Dizel's buildings there. Uh, but a very, very action-packed match, very uh, even match. I'm sure people are going to point out mistakes here and there, but really they were forced on the players to do those things that they did because there was so much going on they couldn't control it all. It was a very, very good game. That is, I can't believe how good that was. Um, so yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this VOD, and well done to both players, and I'll see you all next time.